Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the season or opener of The Magicians on Sci-Fi. And this is one of my favorite shows on the air right now. It's amazing. And I'm excited to talk about it with you, so let's get started into the recap. Okay. So it's the third season of The Magicians, and just to recap, I have a whole notebook just full of notes. So, you know, Ember and Umbra are dead, which is like, bro, like how you just kill gods, like, like it was nothing. And you know, Alice is back alive, like as a normal human, like she would be a magician if there was magic, but there's no magic. And let's see. After, because after they killed Ember and Umber, the mommy and daddy gods, they decided to just turn off magic with the plumbers, and so there's no magic right now. And then Elliot and Margot are stuck in Fillory with no magic, but they have fairies, and like this whole second realm just looming over them all the time, and like they're trying to figure that shit out. And let's see. Oh, Penny. Penny has cancer, magical cancer, like not normal, no, normal, <laughs> not normal cancer, like magical cancer. And so he's trying to deal with that. And also, like he signed his life away to the librarians, but he's like also still trying to like date Katie. And it's like, bro, not only are you dying, but you signed your life away to be like their slave basically for the rest of your life, and you're still trying to have a normal relationship with Katie, like. Leave that girl alone and go about your business. But let's see, after that, oh yeah, Alice is alive, like she was a nymph earlier, but now, now she's just a plain old born human, cause there ain't no magic. So like, if she was a nymph, she probably would still have magic, but you know, she'd be a nymph and dead. So you know, Who's to say which life would be better for her, but she's alive now, and Katie is still being shady, like, well, last season she met this deaf woman who was a, I think she was a hedge? I'm not, I'm not sure if the deaf woman went to school or not, but Katie is working with her to get information between her and, what's his name? Penny. But we'll see we'll see where that whole thing goes. And Julia. Like oddly enough, Julia is the one person who has magic. Which is crazy because in season one, what's her name? Jane Chatwin said that the one thing she changed this time around was Julia being rejected, and now Julia is the only one with magic, so apparently that was the only right move. Cause you know, the beast is also gone now and so is Reynard. He went back with his godmother who is black in a black woman's body and like when he went back with her the godmother not godmother like fairy godmother like she is a god and the mother of Reynard so god mother of Reynard and she gave Julia back her shade which gave her back her humanity and so then now Julia has sprinkles of magic so basically that like that's the season recap let's see what this episode has to bring okay <laughs> okay season three now we open up with julia and quentin trying to figure out magic you know because julia like she can make like sparkles appear and stuff and like i'm sure she can do other stuff but it's like all party tricks basically and like little things where it's like, is this real magic? Is this just a really good party trick? Nobody really knows. But like nobody else can do it multiple times. Like everyone else has flare-ups of magic, but she has repeated flare-ups. So you know, it's time to see a doctor. <laughs> but anyways, her and her and Q are trying to figure out how to get magic back because they're like, you have magic. You know, the god gave you back your shade, like there's probably, she probably gave you a little extra, you know. And so that's what they're trying to figure out. And let's see. Oh, Fillory. So Fillory, 
is just fucked. Like, Fillory is fucked beyond repair at this point, honestly. And Margo and Elliot are trying to figure it out, but they also have the, what are they called, the fairies just on their ass. And it's like, you can't rule a country with fairies just controlling your every move, basically, is what they're doing. And it's like, they can hear everything they say, and it's like, at this point, like, when they figure out a loop, like, it takes them a whole episode to figure out a loophole just so that the fairies can't hear them. Because the fairy lady, she gives Margo an assignment to get earthworms, and Margo's like, fuck that, like, I'm gonna delegate because, like, I'm not picking earthworms. And so she delegates it off to some guy, but then the fairy queen comes back and is like, oh no, I told you to do that, so you better do that. And Margo's like, how the hell did you even know? And so it's like, they go through this whole thing of trying to figure out how to communicate without the fairies knowing. And so, let's see. So, they figure out that the fairies can communicate between worlds with the bunnies. And so they're like, oh, I'm gonna use a bunny to communicate with Quinn and Julia on Earth because I need, the, I need their help. And they also figure out that, you know, they can hear everything and they think that the other, the one other country in Fillory has a, has a blind spot to them, but the fairies are like, mm, no, that blind spot doesn't work. We know about it and anyone who talks about fairies to you is gonna die. So, you know, don't even try that shit. And so they're like, well, fine. And so Elliot and Margo are like talking in this made up language. I think they said it was from Star Trek or whatever, but they're just talking in code to each other in order to figure out how not to have the fairies hear them, which is just genius because we'll leave it to Elliot and Margo to fall back on a secret plan to get them through the day. But anyways, so. Anyways. So Penny is working for the librarians, but he still has his magical cancer. But when he's at the library, the cancer doesn't progress any and he can be healthy and functioning and alive. But when he comes into the real world to return books, he like time catches up to him. And so they the library only sends him on missions of that app. <laughs> Sorry. So the library, they send them on missions an hour at a time. They're like, you can be in the real world for an hour, but after that, you know, the cancer, the, the cancer is going to come back. So you have to get back to the library where time doesn't exist. And he's like, fuck that. I want to get me some booty real quick. And so he calls up Katie. And so because he's like out hanging with Katie and, you know, just lollygagging, then by the time he finally gets back to the library, they're like, why are you so sick right now? Cause he's like throwing up blood and ish. And it's like, bro, leave this girl alone, send her a note, you know, send her a text while you're out. But it's like, you can't just be outside of the library this long. Cause you're dying, literally dying. But, Whatever, he doesn't care, you know, love is love, whatever. Okay, you gonna know, die with that love, cause ain't nothing can save you, there's no magic. So even if there was a magical solution to your magic cancer, it wouldn't work. So I guess, you know, their whole philosophy, well not even, it's not Katie. Cause Katie is like, what are you doing here? Like, you need to go back to where you belong, where they can save you. And he's like, no, I love you. It's like, we only have, you know, so little time. So it's like, might as well live it up. He, he's using a YOLO approach. So whatever. That's Penny and Katie's situation. Oh, and Katie is still trying to work with the deaf woman from last season, who she kind of sort of blackmailed into helping them. And it's like, girl. 
like magic is gone you have an out but then the deaf lady comes back is like i can help save penny so obviously katie's like oh you can help save them well we have to do that and so i'm sure shenanigans shenanigans will ensue and once 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 katie it's like katie is shenanigans like she's a head witch because she came from a head witch and she like it's kind of like ingrained in her to just be a shenanigan so that's penny and katie meanwhile while fillory is broke and margo and elliot are trying to deal with that and penny's dying and penny and katie are trying to deal with that Julia and Q are trying to get magic back for everybody because they're like, Julia has magic, so magic is still a thing. And so they try and find a lesser god that can find, that can lead them to the bigger gods. And that's because it's like the bigger gods that they call the parent gods. Like, they're the ones who shut off the magic. The lesser gods are the ones who, you know, are tearing up shit. Like, they're the ones who created Fillory, that, that's Raynard, he's considered a lesser god. And so they're like, if these gods have parents and they're the ones who shut off the magic, then we just have to find a lesser god and have them find their parents, and then we can get magic back, right? Right, it sounds simple, but you know, last time they tried to summon a god, they summoned Reynard, and that ended successfully. So, so now they find this party god through... The guy, he was a part of, I think it's the third year class that disappeared, but he was actually in Fillory the whole time. No, he, he wasn't in Fillory the whole time. He went to Fillory, but then got back to the Netherlands and the Fountain Place, and then Penny and the rest of the crew, they found him and brought him back to Breakbowl or whatever. And whatever. So he's like, I know a god that can help you guys. And he's, they're like, you know a god? bro like if you know a god tell us like and so like they follow this kid to find this god julia and q follow this kid to find a god and this guy is the party god basically like he he doesn't he disemboweled all his responsibility but kept all his god powers and he's on twitter and instagram and stuff and he like instagrams like where he's gonna be at he has like parties for eight days straight and whatever so he's like the lowest of the low of the gods but you know he ain't a trickster god so he's not gonna rape and kill anybody so he's already better than Reynard. and this guy i have no clue what his name is it starts with a b but he is not helpful at all he's like i just want to party if you're not here to party you can't even get in so at first he doesn't even let julia and q into the party he's like fuck you guys you guys are boring as fuck like you're bringing the mood down but then they get drunk and they ended up singing a song and they're like he's like okay you guys are being fun so now that you're being fun you can come into the club and he does not want to answer any any of their questions he is just useless beyond belief and yeah and so Q and Julia, they like don't get any answers. He's like, I'm not, I, I don't want to talk about this shit right now. So if you guys want to talk about this shit, you will have to leave and find somebody else. And so they're like, well, we're, we can't leave because who else are we going to go to? So they party a little bit and then Julia ends up showing the one guy who was in the Netherlands that she still has magic. And Q is like, what the fuck are you doing because you can't just show people that you have magic like you can't just do that like you don't like like Julia's like why can't I he seems like a good guy like he led us he led us to a god he's on our team he's on our team but not really because you know everyone's desperate for magic so can't really trust anybody that much but anyways so Ju julia shows this kid that she can do magic she like does this thing where she like inhales and does the little magic thing with her hands and then like makes all these crazy ass smoke rings or whatever 
it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <sighs> okay, so Elliot is the one in the Knight in Shining Armor because he's the one that has them figure out that they have to go on a quest in order to figure out how to save how to save magic. And so Elliot and one of his henchmen, like not henchmen, but he's on like his royal court or whatever. And so Elliot and this guy, they go in the forest and they're looking for the white lady, which we've seen before. Yeah, we've seen, I think he's all in the first season, I want to say. Maybe the second, I don't know. We've seen her before and she grants wishes and they're looking for her, but instead they find the royal cock or the majestic cock or the giant cock. They find some cock and he's like, you know, I'm not going to grant you wishes because it's like, that's not what I do. But instead, I will send you on this quest. And so, he sends Ellie on this quest and Elliot's like, mm, no, like, I don't, I, I don't want to go on a quest. I just want you to fix shit. But he's like, no, you have to get your friends together and you guys have to figure out this quest. And so he's like, you have to find the book without an author. And like, that's the first part of the quest. And Elliot's like, bro, I'm in Fillory with no magic and no like regular books. He's like, so how am I gonna do this? And so he figures out like with the help of the sloth that is in his, um, the sloth that is in his royal court, they like, they're like, so fairies use bunnies to contact to other worlds and bunnies they're not aligned it's kind of sort of like first come first serve and so Elliot's like I'm gonna get me a bunny and I'm gonna send that bunny to Q and Julia and tell them to find this book and like that if they can find it then we are officially like on course to start this quest and so he's like so he sends the bunny and he's like Need help. Love Elliot. Like that's the whole message of the bunny. It's super creepy. It's like, need help. Love Elliot. Just one with bunny. And it's like, in the real world, that's not normal. Like in Fillory, sure. But in the real world, no. So, Q and Julia hear this message and they find the book without... What's it called? <laughs> They find the book without an author, and they're like, oh shit, like, it's an empty ass book, like, like, an empty ass book, like, it only has, like, the first, like, maybe chapter, like, I don't even think it has the first chapter, like, it has the opening statements, and they're like, oh, this is gonna be, like, a legit quest, and because the guy, hang on, I gotta get my notes. I gotta get my notes. Yeah, so the guy, he's like, you gotta find, like, he's, he, the, the, the magical cock tells Elliot that he has friends to help him on this quest, and he has to find the one-eyed cocker, Amargo, because she had to give the fairy queen her eyeball. Who the fuck wants an eyeball? Oh, and tangent, side note, Elliot's wife is back, and she apparently gave her toes to be back, but I think their baby is back too. I'm not sure. They, like, they, they didn't show any baby faces or anything, but she was carrying a little baby bundle, so I'm not sure if the baby's back or if she's just lost her mind, so there's a side note. Elliot's wife is back, but the baby may or may not be back. Anyway, so we have the one eye conqueror. <laughs> they have the they have the one eye conqueror being Margo, the traveler obviously being Penny, the warrior, which I'm pretty sure is Katie because she's the best at battle magic because you know she's a hedge and that's yeah. The Fool, which we already know is Quentin because in the last season they figured out that they had met Jane Chatwin because they found in the chapter of the Fillory books they found the Fool and the Witch, 
which is a character that the Chatwins met in the books, and Julia was the witch, and Quentin <laughs> was the fool. Shocker. But anyways, he's the fool, and then Julia is the god touched. The lover of tomatoes was the guy who brought them to the party with the god. I don't, I don't know. What is his name? Because all he talks about is his tomatoes that he was able to grow in the Netherlands through the magic. Like, I don't know his actual name. Like, is, is, is it Josh? No, I'm pretty sure Josh is another guy. I don't know. But he, apparently he's a, like just a full on part of the group now, so. There's that. And he said the tortured artist. And it's like, is that Alice? Because there are quite a few things I would describe Alice as, but a tortured artist, like, is she really artistic? Like, she's very gifted. Like, she is a powerful magician. But, you know, is she an artist? So I'm not sure if that was Alice, or if they just find somebody else who's an artist, and they are like, sure, you can be part of our group now. Yeah. So that's the whole crew. Okay, so now I've gone through the whole first episode of The Magician and I am excited for this little quest. Like it's just a quest to find keys. And like after the first two seasons that's a refreshing break because the first two seasons like they were trying to kill a beast and then they were trying to kill a Reynard while also still trying to kill the beast and like the Chatwins were all involved and like they realized that Martin Chatwin was the beast and it was like all this craziness and it was like now you know they're just going on a quest to find magic what could go wrong right so you know I'm excited for this season and I hope that you are too and I'll be doing these re these drunk recaps every single week so you know Thursday and Friday you know check my channel because there will be an upload about the magicians on sci-fi network and you know you should watch along with me and we can just talk about this because this shit is crazy so yeah you know if you like this video you know hit the thumbs up like like please hit the thumbs up like it doesn't doesn't cost anything nobody's gonna know it was you so just hit that like button hit that subscribe button it's free help a girl out you know and we can oh my shirt my little loopy loop came out anyways let's 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 be best friends you know what maybe 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 that's too much pressure you know we don't we don't we don't have to be best friends we can just at least be friends you know you know if you subscribe we're friends you know if you just give me a like you know we're acquaintances you know if you give me a comment if you if you comment we're best friends but yeah so thanks for watching this video i really i it means the world to me that you watch this whole thing so just tell me that you watched the whole thing because yeah and i'll see you next week with season three episode two of the magicians let's see what shenanigans these guys can get into and how margo is going to be the one to save everyone's ass because you know that's how it works because margo is the best but actually it probably won't be margo this season because she's being a fairy bitch so it will probably be Julia this season because she's the one who's like God touched. So let's see Julia not suck for once. <laughs> and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.